It's a joy to come into your homes. And if you're ever in our area, please stop by and be a part of one of our services. I promise you, we'll make you feel right at home. I like to start with something funny. And I heard about this reporter. He was visiting churches across the nation. While in the Northeast, he saw this gold phone on the wall with a sign that said calls $10,000 per minute. He asked the pastor what it meant. The pastor explained that that was a direct line to heaven. If you were willing to pay the price, you could talk directly to God. He continued visiting different churches, saw the same gold phone, the same sign. When he finally made it to Texas, he saw the phone, but the sign said calls 25 cents per minute. Intrigued, he asked the pastor why it was so much cheaper. The pastor said, you're in Texas, now it's a local call. (laughs) Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I want to talk to you today about your faith. In Mark chapter 5, there was a lady that had a bleeding disorder for 12 years. She'd gone to many doctors, spent all of her money, tried everything she could to get well, but nothing helped. She continued to go downhill. One day, there was all this commotion in her town. She found out that Jesus was passing through. She had heard the stories of how he had healed a crippled man, how he'd opened blind eyes, how he'd cured someone with leprosy. Something came alive on the inside. She thought he did it for others. He can do it for me. She could have been discouraged, complaining. Life is not fair. Why did this happen? Instead, she said to herself, if I can get to Jesus and just touch the fringe of his robe, I know I will be healed. The problem was there was a great crowd surrounding Jesus. Thousands of people all packed in. Seemed impossible. Most people would have given up and thought, hey, it's not meant to be. Not this lady. She started making her way through the crowd. Excuse me, I need to get by. Pardon me, I have to get up front. I don't mean to be rude, but move out of my way. People looked at her like, what's this lady's problem? She was on a mission. She had a made up mind. I'm sure she was weak. She had lost blood for years. She didn't feel like it, but she fought her way through the crowd. One version said, she kept saying to herself, when I get to Jesus, I know I will be well. She was saying, I know healing is coming. I know things are turning in my favor. It's tough now. I'm tired, I'm weak, but I know I'm close to my breakthrough. The reason she could keep going is she kept the right thoughts playing in her mind. I can imagine she was so exhausted, she finally fell to the ground had to crawl the last few feet. Just at the right time, she reached out and touched the edge of Jesus' robe. All of a sudden, Jesus stopped, said to his disciples, who just touched me? And they said, what do you mean? It's crowded out here, everybody's touching you. He said, in effect, no, everyone may be bumping into me, but somebody just touched me. Somebody drew the miracle working power out of me. They believed healing was coming. They believed their child was going to turn around. They believed new doors were going to open. They touched me with expectancy. About that time, Jesus looked at this woman. Their eyes met. She was afraid, thought she'd done something wrong. Jesus smiled and said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace, you are healed. Notice the key was her faith. It was great that her parents were praying, her friends were encouraging her, her neighbors were cheering her on. That's all good, but there's nothing more powerful than your faith. When you believe, when you expect things to change, when you keep saying to yourself, I know the breakthrough is coming. I know healing is on the way. I know the right person is in my future. I know what God started, he's going to finish. Your faith can stop the creator of the universe. That's what activates his power. There were other people in the crowd that day that were sick. Many people that had needs, no doubt they bumped into Jesus, nothing happened. 
but this lady touched him. Are you brushing up against him or are you touching him? Are you living with expectancy, knowing that he's bigger than those problems, greater than that sickness, more powerful than that opposition? Or have you become discouraged, thinking it's never going to change? God is passing by. He has all power. Don't just brush up against him. Don't be passive and think you could never accomplish your dreams, never meet the right person, never start your business. Do like this lady, reach out and touch him. Release your faith. Believe that it will happen. This lady was closest to her miracle when she faced the greatest opposition. Would have been easy if Jesus would have come just a few disciples. She could have gone out and touched him without the struggle, without all the people in the way, but she had to fight through the crowd. The crowd represents broken dreams, things that didn't work out. Thoughts telling you it's never going to get better. You'll never get well, never break the addiction. The crowd can be negative words people have spoken over us. You're not that talented. You can't accomplish your dreams. If you're going to reach your potential, you have to fight through some things. You can't have a weak, give up, this is too hard spirit. You have to be more determined than what's trying to stop you. You may get knocked down, but you have to get back up again. You need to have a made up mind. This disappointment is not going to stop me. I'm not going to let the mistakes I've made, the guilt, the regrets cause me to shrink back. I'm not going to allow the bad breaks, the people that did me wrong, the rejection, the betrayal cause me to get bitter and stay where I am. I'm going to fight through the crowd. Many of the miracles Jesus performed, he laid his hands on people and they were healed. But in this case, Jesus didn't lay hands on the woman, the woman laid hands on Jesus. Are you waiting for God to lay hands on you, so to speak? God, this problem's so big. When are you gonna do something about it? Why don't you lay hands on him? Instead of complaining about the problem, Lord, I wanna thank you that things are turning in my favor. Thank you that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Lord, thank you that you hold victory in store for the upright. I don't see a way, but Lord, I want to thank you. I know you have a way. When you do that, you're laying hands on God. Your faith can initiate the healing. Your faith can be the catalyst for God to do amazing things. Acts chapter 14, the apostle Paul was teaching people. He noticed a crippled man in the crowd. He'd been that way since birth and never walked. Verse nine says, Paul realized the man had faith to be healed. Here the man was just sitting in the audience listening to Paul, but he must have had such anticipation on his face. Paul must have seen something in his expression and expectancy that something good was going to happen like a little child at a candy store. Paul was so impressed he stopped his message and said, sir, I can see you're ready for your miracle. Stand up. The man stood up and instantly he was healed, began to walk for the first time. Like that man, we should live with this anticipation that something good is going to happen. Yes, we've all had difficulties. We all have a reason to be sour. Don't let that talk you out of what God has in store. You wouldn't be alive if there wasn't something amazing in your future. Can your faith be seen? Can anyone notice that you're expecting to go to a new level? Are you talking like it's going to happen? Thinking like it's going to happen? Believing like it's going to happen? God is passing by. But if you're negative, I don't see how it'll work out. I never get any good breaks. I've been this way a long time. You may brush up against him, but you're not going to touch him. You have to show God you're ready to be healed, ready to be free, ready to be blessed. There should be an expectancy. It could happen today. You could meet the person of your dreams this week. You could see your health turn around this month. This year could be your year to go to a new level where things fall into place. Good breaks find you promises you've been believing for suddenly come to pass. Well, Joel, what if I believe for it and it doesn't happen? What if you believe for it and it does happen? 
When you live with expectancy, where your faith can be seen in your expressions, in your attitude, and how you talk, that's going to cause God to notice you in a new way. God is always with us. He has us in the palm of his hand, but faith is what gets his attention. The scripture says, it is impossible to please God without faith. That's a powerful statement. That means you can be obedient and have a sour attitude and limited vision and not please God. You can give, serve, feed the poor, and that's all important. We should do that. But if you're not believing for things bigger than you can accomplish on your own, if you're not expecting difficulties to turn around, if you're not anticipating new levels, thanking God that he's bringing promises to pass, then you're not releasing your faith. You have to stir up what God put in you. He's passing by. Don't just sit back and watch. Well, I wish I could break the addiction. I wish I could accomplish my dreams. Why don't you reach out and touch him? Lord, I want to thank you that you're opening doors no man can shut. Thank you that you're taking me where I could not go on my own. Lord, I believe healing is on the way. Freedom is on the way. The right person is on the way. Abundance is on the way. That's how we touch God today with our faith. Well, Joel, I'm waiting for God to do something. Maybe God is waiting on you. This lady didn't wait for Jesus to lay hands on her. She laid hands on him. And I realize God has a perfect time, but the scripture says now faith is. Faith is always in the present. And things may not instantly change. We all have waiting periods, but our faith should stay active. Our normal attitude should be, Lord, I'm looking for your goodness, not next week, not next month, not next year. I'm looking for it today. Stay in the now. Live with the anticipation that it could happen today. For several years, there's been something I've been believing for, ways that we can expand the ministry. Every day I did what I'm asking you to do. Lord, I thank you that it's on the way. I thank you that you're making things happen that I couldn't make happen. Didn't see any sign of it. But each morning I went out with expectancy, looking for God's goodness, knowing it could happen at any moment. This went on month after month, even year after year, no sign. How badly do you want it? The lady in the scripture waited 12 years, but she wanted it so badly, she fought through the crowd. Every voice said to her, stay home. It's too much trouble. There's so much opposition. Her attitude was, I've come too far to stop now. I may be tired, I may be uncomfortable, but I'm gonna get to Jesus. When God sees you doing what you can, believing when there's no sign, thanking him when you're weak, taking steps of faith when you're uncomfortable, God will give you strength that goes beyond your natural ability. He'll help you do what you couldn't do on your own. I just kept believing day after day, thanking God. Last week, on Monday, something happened that I've been believing for for over three years. I was so grateful. Then Tuesday morning, something even more amazing happened. I couldn't believe it. If that wasn't enough, Tuesday evening, something bigger than the first two combined, more than I can imagine, happened. It was like rapid fire, boom, 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 a flood of God's favor. That's the way God is. When you stay in faith, you consistently thank him even when there's no sign. You will come into these suddenlies where God not only surprises you, you didn't see it coming, but it will exceed your expectation. The scripture talks about how God will do things that will cause our head to spin. My head was spinning that night. Maybe you've been praying, believing, expecting for a long time. Stay encouraged. It's on the way. You are closer than you think. It's going to happen sooner than it looks. There's no sign of things improving. Everything looks the same. Get ready. God is full of surprises. He doesn't always do things in a normal way where it gradually gets better. He'll do them suddenly out of the ordinary. You didn't see it coming. It's because day after day, week after week, you kept touching him. You kept expecting it. 
You kept thanking him it was on the way. You kept talking like it was going to happen. Your faith is going to make you whole. Your faith is going to break the addiction. Your faith is going to bring you out of death. Your faith is going to help you accomplish your God-given dreams. Talk to a lady that started having problems with her legs. Her muscles and joints were causing her such pain. Got to the point where she couldn't walk. All the doctors could do was give her medicine for the pain. For several months, she couldn't go to work. She couldn't stand up. She had to stay at home off of her feet. The prognosis didn't look good. She didn't know if she would ever walk again. One Saturday evening, she and her husband were watching our services online. At the end, I always ask people to stand to receive Christ. Well, her husband stood up right there in the living room. She smiled and was pleasantly surprised. He looked at her and said, come on, honey, stand up with me. She was kind of confused, said, what do you mean? You know I can't stand. He said, sure you can. He took her by the hands and he helped her up. He held her while we were praying. I can imagine God seeing her there, standing in great pain, being held by her husband, but determined to take a step of faith. I said at the end, write this date down. It's going to be a new day of victory. That seed took root in her heart. She believed it was a new day. In a few minutes, while she was sitting on the couch, she felt the bones in her legs begin to pop and crack and her muscles begin to move. She said, I can't explain it, but something unusual was happening. Strength began to come back into her legs. Suddenly, all that pain was gone. Her husband had fallen asleep. She stood up and walked into the bedroom. He couldn't believe it. The next morning, they both got up and went to church. She said, Joel, I don't know what happened, but I've been walking normal ever since then. (laughs) What was that? Her faith made her whole. Just like that lady fought her way through the crowd. When God sees you releasing your faith, it gets his attention. That's what activates his power. She could have been discouraged, told her husband, don't bother me. You know, I can't stand up. But as an act of faith, even though he had to hold her, She stood up. Can God see your faith? Are you doing anything that says, I want to be well, I want to be free, I want to go to the next level? That's what a man did in Mark chapter 10. His name was Bartimaeus. He was a blind beggar sitting on the side of the road. Jesus was leaving Jericho and about to pass in front of him. When he found out it was Jesus, he started shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Well, Jesus technically wasn't the son of David. He was the son of Joseph. Why did Bartimaeus call him son of David? He recognized he was the Messiah. A few chapters earlier, the religious leaders didn't recognize Jesus. They thought he was a fraud. They were jealous, intimidated. It's interesting that this blind man A man that didn't have physical sight was one of the first ones to recognize Jesus as the Messiah. When he cried out, Jesus, son of David, he was saying, Messiah, healer, deliverer, most high God. Jesus stopped in his tracks. I can imagine Jesus thinking, here's someone that knows who I am. He knows I am all powerful. He's expecting my goodness. When Bartimaeus started shouting, people around him said, Bartimaeus, be quiet. You're causing a scene. He's going to get upset with you. People will try to talk you out of your miracle. They'll tell you all the reasons why you can't get well, why you won't break the addiction, why you won't meet the right person. It's because they don't know what God put in you. They can't hear what you hear. Negative voices will try to discourage you. But when you get quiet, you'll hear that still small voice saying, this addiction is not your destiny. You're better than this. Living in lack, not able to get ahead is not your lot in life. Abundance is on the way. Being depressed, no passion, that is not who you are. Freedom is coming. Joy is coming. Breakthroughs are coming. God whispers in your spirit dreams and promises, what you can become. 
The enemy will do his best to drown that out. No matter how loud those other voices are, don't let them talk you out of what God has whispered in your spirit. The scripture talks about the secret petitions of our hearts. That's the dreams God gave you at night. The promises you haven't told anyone about. It seems too far out, like it could never happen. That's God speaking to you. His dream for your life is much bigger than your own. But these people saw Bartimaeus as insignificant, unimportant. He's just a blind beggar. They told him to be quiet, but Bartimaeus shouted even louder. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, let him come to me. Verse 50 says, Bartimaeus threw off his coat. This was significant. In those days, scholars tell us when a person had a legitimate disability, they were given an official coat from the government that gave them the right to beg. The beggar's coat was very valuable. That's how they made their living. On the other hand, it labeled you as a beggar. Just as we recognize people by their uniforms, police officer, firefighter, a doctor, when you wore the beggar's coat, everywhere you went, people knew you're at a disadvantage. You're not up to par. In a sense, that coat gave you the right to feel sorry for yourself, the right to be depressed, the right to sit around in self-pity. When Bartimaeus heard Jesus say, come, the first thing he did was throw off his coat. His attitude was, this is a new day. I am done feeling sorry for myself. I'm done wearing this label that says disadvantage. I'm done begging. I don't need this coat anymore. He changed his mindset. I am not a victim. I am a victor. God is on the throne. He's bigger than this problem. He has beauty for these ashes. He got rid of the excuses. As long as you justify where you are, making excuses as to why you can't rise higher, why you're at a disadvantage, why you're bitter, then you'll get stuck. I wonder how many of us are wearing that beggar's coat. Joel, I had a bad childhood. I've got a good reason to be bitter. Somebody walked out of a relationship. I lost a loved one. I came down with an illness. That's why I'm negative. That's why I'm sour. Before you can get well, you have to take off the beggar's coat. Can I tell you, we all have a reason to feel sorry for ourselves. Everybody's been hurt. Everybody's made mistakes. Everybody's had disappointments. Get rid of the excuses. It may not have been fair, but God is fair. He's a God of justice. He wouldn't have allowed it if it was going to keep you from your purpose. And I'm all for being compassionate, loving, kind, but I don't believe in giving people the right to feel sorry for themselves. Not because it wasn't fair, not because life didn't throw you a curve, but because it will keep you from seeing the beauty for ashes. It will keep you from being restored, healed, vindicated, promoted. God wants to make the enemy pay. He wants to bring you out better. Do your part. Take off the self-pity. Take off the hurts. Take off the disappointments. You can't reach your destiny making excuses. As long as you're wearing the beggar's coat, giving yourself a reason to be bitter and feel disadvantaged, feel less than, it will keep you from the new levels God has in store. When Bartimaeus took off that coat, he was not only leaving his livelihood, he was leaving the negative things of the past. It was symbolic. He was leaving the dysfunction, the bad breaks. You have to be willing to leave some things if you're going to become all you were created to be. You may need to leave bitterness, leave a bad attitude, leave compromise. Jesus told Bartimaeus to come. He couldn't see, but he started walking toward Jesus based solely on what he heard. You may not see healing yet, but you have to go by what you've heard. By his stripes, I am healed. You don't see increase yet. Business is slow. Go by what you've heard. I will lend and not borrow. Your child's off course. No sign of him improving. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Walk by faith and not by sight. Jesus asked Bartimaeus, what is it that you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want to see. Jesus said, 
your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. You are healed. Instantly he could see. God is saying to us what he said to him. Your faith is going to turn things around. Your faith is going to open the right doors. Your faith is going to bring unusual favor. It's going to happen sooner than it looks. Keep expecting it. Keep talking like it's going to happen. Go out each morning looking for God's goodness. He's passing by. Don't just brush up against him. Do like this lady. Reach out and touch him. If you'll do this, I believe and declare. Like Bartimaeus, your faith is going to make things happen that you could never make happen. God is about to open supernatural doors, turn impossible situations around, and take you to the fullness of your destiny in Jesus' name. If you receive it, can you say amen today? I'd like to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Would you pray with me? Just say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Friends, if you prayed that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. Get in a good Bible-based church. Keep God first place. Your partnership makes this ministry possible. Your faithful and consistent monthly support makes you a champion of hope. The vision of Joel Osteen Ministries is to use every avenue available to present the hope of Jesus Christ to people everywhere. We know it is this hope and the transforming power of the gospel that makes an eternal difference in people's lives. To partner with Joel Osteen Ministries, visit joelosteen.com partner today.